So welcome to part four of the mostly printed CNC machine build. We're going to discuss wiring on this episode. Things are coming along very nicely. The assembly is going very well. I've got the belts on. Uh, I've got the stepper motors on every place. And now it's time to do some wiring. So before we even start the wiring, we need to uh, get the wiring harness. And I'm going to show this to you, uh, what I ordered. Uh, let's go ahead to the vicious1.com uh, website. Uh, this is the designer of the mostly printed CNC machine. And we're going to go to the shop. And uh, very nice. And we're going to go to the parts. And this right here is what you want to buy. I mean, you can wire it up manually, but boy, this makes it so slick. And for $13, uh, you get everything you need here. You get a... Uh, um, because the uh, because the stepper motors on on the opposite ends of a given axis need to be wired in reverse from each other, um, you know it gets a little confusing. But with this wiring harness kit, um, you just plug it together and it works. So let's take a closer look at this. Um, he's got some wonderful pictures here. You uh, get a uh, wiring harness for the x-axis, the y-axis, and an extender cable for the z-axis so you don't have to monkey around with that. And also you get a, <clears throat> a little plug with a, uh, a resistor in it uh, to convince the uh, Marlin software that the uh, uh, printer head is, uh, is hot. Uh, so uh, there are some safety features in Marlin where I won't do anything unless the printer head is hot. So this is a little uh, bypass for that. Um, so let's take a look at some of the additional pictures he has here. Whoops, my apologies. So here's a good example here. Female end of the connector plugs into your ramp card. Uh, the the dual connected end plugs into your uh, one of the steppers. Look most likely the closest stepper to your uh, to your uh, ramps card, and then this one goes through the tubing to the uh, uh, stepper on the other end of the tube, just like magic. So for thirteen ninety nine, uh, I really suggest getting one of these. I did; it's uh, fantastic. Let's take a look at some of his diagrams for wiring the steppers here on viciousone.com. He's got a nice picture here. I kind of like that. Uh, uh, shows how, I kind of zoomed in a little bit there, let me take it out. So how easy it is, you uh, plug uh, one end into the ramps card, uh, the uh, end that has the dual wiring plugs into the uh, um, stepper motor closest to the ramps card, and on the other end of the tubing for the other end uh, of that given axis, um, you just extend it through the tubing and off to the other stepper motor. Simple as that. Fantastic stuff. He's got some wiring diagrams here if you want to do it yourself. Um, uh, I just bought the wiring harness and uh, plugged it in, and it's perfect. So let's go on to look at some of the other information I have here. And we'll start off with a, um, a little bit of a discussion in my pictorial of the wiring. So, let's so I've got sort of a pictorial wiring diagram here uh, built up in uh, Design 123D. And... Uh, now we've got the key up here showing the different axis wiring. Uh, these are the um, wiring harnesses uh, from, from Vicious One's um, uh, shop online there, his website. So let's take a close look here. This green box down here is the uh, Arduino ramps assembly. Uh, each of these little orange boxes is uh, represents a stepper motor, all five of them here. And uh, the ones I bought uh, came with a little uh, wire uh, with a connector on it. Actually, it's a meter long in mine, so this uh, length isn't representative. Um, but uh, you certainly do want to get one that has a connector on the end. Uh, I think it's a little more convenient. So let's take a look at each of these axes uh, individually. Now, of course, these wirings uh, will be passed uh, through the tubing here, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So first, let's take a look at the uh, x-axis. So plugged into the x-axis of the Arduino card, here's the cable from uh, from uh, that we purchased online. It goes up to the closest um, stepper motor here and connects to that. And this was a double connector here. Uh, the other connector um, runs off to uh, the stepper motor on the far side of the tube. And once again, this this section of uh, 
wire will be running inside the tube to get across to the other side. So it's the same thing for the Y axis. Uh, we're connected into the Arduino and the wiring harness we purchased connects to the closest uh, um, Y axis stepper motor and then uh, this connector, this wire here would be running through the tube uh, to the far side um, stepper motor and connect through there. One last one we have the z-axis motor and that would connect to the z-axis extension wire that was part of the uh, assembly uh, wire harness kit and to the z-axis of the Arduino. Um, when assembling these uh, per tips on the uh, assembly instructions on the Vicious One website, uh, you want to tape these connectors together. So we'll run a little bit of tape around the, uh, the connectors once they're attached. Be sure to attach these in the same direction. Uh, if you notice on these little black connectors, there's one side that's all black, and the other side you'll be able to see uh, the uh, gold from some of the pins. You want uh, the same side facing the same side and the wiring harness um, to make things work and make sure that all the connections are uniform in that way. So I hope that uh, hope that was somewhat uh, clear. Hope that's helpful. Um, let's continue on. So we're making progress on this project. It's kind of a mess in here, but now that I've got a light inside the cabinet, we can see how much of a mess it is. I've got a lot of wires here, some that I've extended that uh, will be... ...that uh, will be, we'll be going down to the uh, control box down below here. So instead of putting uh, caps on the ends of the conduit, I've decided to go with a split, uh, a split tubing wrap. And those will get mounted right down there through a cable chain. There's a cable chain back in here. I'll take you off the camera for a second, to, or off the tripod here for a second so you can take a look at it. So we've got a nice cable chain back here. It works quite well, and that's already down underneath and, uh, and uh, ready to be hooked up to the... Uh, the control box here. Let me get those cables out of the way here. There we go. And I'll run inside, of course. There we go. And uh, we've got uh, uh, power for the system here and uh, uh, available temperature. I've got a couple other slots for temperature if we decide to. There's a PC power supply back here out of a 1U PC. A rack mount PC and a whole bunch of other junk down here that I've been using to uh, uh, put this guy together. So you can see that uh, this end of the conduit uh, or end of the uh, um, wires go through the center conduit over to there. And likewise, we have the far side of the wires there from that stepper motor coming back all the way over to. Uh, this opening over here along with the um, z-axis here I plan to put a cable a chain in for that uh, I just don't have one printed yet and in fact I'm I'm still printing one today for for this axis uh, I've got a pen mount all ready to go upstairs so we'll uh, maybe try things out with a pen mount uh, pen drawing at first uh, it'll be a while before I can get that uh, uh, DeWalt um, uh, mini router thing that they recommend uh, so that'll be a couple weeks off probably or a week uh, I've been using this print in place uh, cable chain on the mostly printed CNC that I'm building let's take a look at it more closely here whoops we got a surprise there as long as you print it uh, lightly on the bed so that you're not squishing it down it, of course, comes off pretty easy. And then the other nice thing by doing that is that uh, it will pretty much uh, start working right away without too much effort. Um, if you print it too hard on the bed, then you're going to have some cleanup to do and some prying to get things to pop loose. But uh, otherwise, it's just a little bit of a, 
little bit of pressure and a snap there without any major work. And it looks like I've got one more here that hasn't gone yet. Oh, we got one. We got one that's kind of stubborn there that we'll have to work on a little bit more over in the in the desk. Oh, there it went. So now works great. I'm just printing one set at a time because I'm coming down to the end here, and I won't be needing two anymore. I think maybe one more uh, will get me to where I want to be over here. So this works uh, works really nicely saves a lot of assembly time and it's uh, compatible with the end pieces uh, for the mostly printed CNC machine that you find on the uh, on uh, Thingiverse also. So. So I was looking around the garage for uh, some silicone grease that I know that I had for the 3D printer and I just can't find it. And I came across the, this uh, really big thing of wheel bearing grease in my, uh, in my uh, tool chest out there. Now why I have this, I have no idea. Does it have a manufacturer date on it? I don't know. It must be back in the 90s or something for all I know. Um, but applied a little bit. Built a little, applied a little bit of that to the threaded rod and that seemed to really quiet things down and smooth things up. <clears throat> so, I'll show you what I did wrong. I didn't think this out. So moving material in and out of the machine, being it's a relatively small machine, it's not like I have lots of open space on top. So the most likely place that I'm going to be sliding something in and out is going to be underneath here right here, right through this space, underneath this this uh, piece of tubing. Unfortunately, this is the side that I put the the wiring on and the, uh, and the uh, um, drag chain. Now, it's nice and convenient to have it up here if you have to work on it, but doggone it, it gets in the way every time I want to try to put something underneath, you know? 
got to work around it and then I bump it and it goes off angle and kitty wampus. So I think I'm going to move it to the back where once it's installed I don't think there should be any maintenance that I have to do on it, at least not very often. So let's give that a try. Alright, so I relocated the uh, um, x-axis uh, cable chain to the back of the machine. It was right over there now. So now I have all this wonderful space up front here to, to slip things underneath. Boards, uh, paper, whatever I'm going to be uh, cutting or uh, engraving or, or drawing on. And uh, I've changed the case around a little bit here for the uh, ramps and, and mega board. I took the uh, large uh, top off that required the fan and went uh, with this displayless uh, top that this thingy has available in the Thingiverse and uh, ordered a new fan and made a fan grid right after I got my finger caught in there once. That was enough for me. And I'm using now this uh, nice little display case here for the um, uh, for the graphic display card. Um, you see there's a mess of wires back here. It's probably accounting for some of the noise in my system, but for now I'm just going to call them service loops and leave them be and try to get by without them. I also added um, X and Y um, limit switches here. Now I've got one on the x-axis, but I've got it up here out of the way right now because I'm just not sure what the point is there. If I if I zero it, the head goes down to the point where the x-axis engages, but then if I want to mill further, then it pushes the uh, end stop up, uh, trying to get past it. So I'm not sure what the point is there. But anyway, it's uh, up and functional now with the... Uh, I uh, downloaded software from um, uh, Vicious One, and uh, let's just take a look at that real quick. I got my EPO button uh, set there. I'm going to turn the DC power off. I'm going to disconnect it from the PC. And if we power it back on, we've got this nice uh, Vicious logo on here, and uh, Marlin type that uh, he's given us, and of course. If we go through and do the prepare, we can do a home X, and we can do a home Y, okay, and then if we do a home Z, of course, uh, whoops, wrong thing. If we do a home Z, then of course uh, uh, the thing's going to continue forever without an end stop. So we can move the, the Z axis up and down. Whoops, let's get centered on the camera here. Z, as you can see here, let's, uh, let's move it up, got the, the pen mount on there, and we can move it back down. And the code is fairly responsive, for instance, if we, if we move X here, or the, rather the, the axes are fairly responsive. This one pretty quickly. I think I've got that set to a smaller value. Let's go to uh, move that uh, 10 millimeters. We'll do X again. Take a look at that. Give it a twist. So it's a fair speed. I think it could probably be a little faster. Um, turns out that I've got uh, about 600 uh, mil on the X axis but only 280 mil on the y-axis, so I probably I probably had my y-axis put together a little bit too short. I was hoping for 300 mil on that one, uh, just to match the, the maximum on the ball spot too. So. But anyway, it seems to be working very good. I've got the software in, we'll talk more about that next time, and uh, we'll even uh, try to do something with it.